Dr. Marwan Sabah, a neurologist, a director of translation research at the Cleveland Clinic Lou Ruvo Center for Brain Health in Las Vegas, Nevada, and spend the entirety of my time and career taking care of people with Alzheimer's and other dementias and doing research. You know, and I know, in the last few weeks, we realized that the era of monoclonal antibodies has come upon us. And the questions I'm asked, and I've been asked for now a few years by companies and other key opinion leaders, is are we ready? And the questions are, what are the key priorities in addressing the challenges to detect it? And the reason is, is that we're in a transformative moment, not just transforming Alzheimer's from a terminal disease to a chronic disease, but we're in a transformative moment because we have done historical perspectives of a clinical phenotypic description of a disease without the biomarker confirmation. And the question's open question, the overt question is, can we still do that without biomarker confirmation and give a drug to a patient that we have no assurance they actually have the target pathology? And that's the question that we need to tackle because that means we have to embed, incorporate biomarker evidence into our clinical pr approach. In the United States and other countries, uh, physicians do not disclose the diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease dementia. And the reason is very simple. Doctors do not know how to diagnose this disease. They don't feel comfortable doing so. Uh, most of the, most of the point of contact of the healthcare system is actually a, uh, uh, in the primary care office. Uh, people don't understand, well, why is this the case? Well. If you look at a primary care physician, family physician, or uh, uh, internal medicine, they have 36 months of training. The typical global training of a primary care physician is 36 months. In that 36 months of training, they'll get one month of neurology. In that one month of neurology, they may or may not get one day of cognitive uh, and memory disorders. And they, all of them, all of us learned in medical school that you can only diagnose Alzheimer's with an autopsy. So the point is, is that the doctors are severely undertrained, uh, not aware. Uh, and so they don't feel comfortable if a patient has a progressive amnestic disorder that's affecting your daily life, which for all the world could be an Alzheimer's syndrome, uh, physicians don't feel comfortable making a diagnosis. So the consequence of this is that a typical diagnosis is delayed by years up to three years. And here's another complication that my team and I actually published on a few years ago. Specifically, we found that best case scenario, the world experts who called a patient with Alzheimer's disease dementia, followed them to autopsy. One out of four of those did not have amyloid in their brain. So the experts said they had Alzheimer's disease dementia and one out of four times we, the experts were wrong. The actual data for uh, non-super experts, the non-KOLs is terrible. Somewhere between 60 and 70% of the time, the clinical diagnosis is accurate, but up to a third of the time, the diagnosis is wrong. So I'm just telling you that the, we think that the way we've been doing it is fine. I'm here to say to you, it just isn't. We're wrong up to one out of three times and as little as one out of four times.